We now head into a final lecture on the continuous Fourier transform. And one of the things that we are going to consider now is mapping uh, differential equations to, which are inputs, to an output differential equation. And Fourier transforms offer a very elegant solution to this, both computationally but also theoretically. And so we're going to pursue this a bit and try to just start to understand this from the point of view of looking at systems of differential equations. Uh, in particular, what we're really looking at here is this idea of an input-output relationship. This is what we've been doing through the whole set of lectures, right, is if I'm looking at an LTI system, linear time invariant system, the output uh, is a convolution of the input signal with the impulse response H of t. So typically what we would do is if I specify for you some input signal, and if I actually know for that linear system, what the impulse response is, I can give you any of the outputs very simply by taking this convolution. Uh, in the last lecture, in fact, what we found uh, is a very elegant strategy for this, which is if you Fourier transform uh, this convolution, then we can get out uh, everything that we need. And now what we're going to do is move on to thinking about what if x and y are actually uh, time-evolving systems that are described by differential equations. Of course, we're going to consider a limited set of differential equations. These are going to be linear, time invariant, and they're going to be uh, so the constant coefficient. And they can be higher order than one or two or three. It can be any order I want here for both the input and for the output y sub t. Okay. So in some sense, this is our generic representation of this. What we have here, right, is the output is some nth order differential equation. So what we're doing here is summing from k equals 0 to n. k is the derivative order, and it goes all the way to nth order derivative. So if it's a third order differential equation, n would be 3. And the a of k that are here are the coefficients for each of the linear differential terms. The second term over here is the input, which is also described by an nth order differential equation. So n and m could be different. And then now, here, it's linear constant coefficient where the coefficients are b of k. So this is quite interesting, right? Normally, we don't think about these kind of systems in a differential equations class, right? We think normally of just solving for x or for y with some forcing functions. But one way to think about this is uh, I'm trying to solve for this output y where the forcing x is actually given by a differential equation itself. So this is kind of an interesting structure for us to start thinking about and it's one that would be common maybe in LTI systems. So here's the main thing we want to dial in on, uh, which is for the continuous Fourier transform, we have this beautiful property about differentiation, which is if we think about a Fourier transform of the signal x to xi omega, here's this Fourier transform symbol, right? So we have this Fourier transform pair. Then if I were to Fourier transform the nth derivative, which is given by here, it simply produces, each derivative produces an i omega out front as a multiplication factor in the Fourier domain. So the nth derivative produces an i omega to the nth power. So a very simple relationship for differentiation in the Fourier domain. Each derivative picks up an i omega, and that's how we would compute a derivative in the Fourier domain. So we're going to use this fact in considering that system where we're looking at this output and input relationships. So let's go back to, first of all, this formula here, which was the output relationship to an input through the impulse response. And this is still going to be relevant for what we want to look at because we're still interested in computing an output from an input and understanding this um, impulse response to the system. And if we looked at the last lecture, the last lecture we said we could actually solve this very easily by Fourier transformations. So convolution, when you Fourier transform this com convolution here, it just becomes multiplication of the Fourier transform of x and the Fourier transform of h. Now one of the things that we're going to now look at here is you don't necessarily know what the impulse response is. And so what's going to allow us to do is by understanding the Fourier transform of the input and understanding the Fourier transform of the output, we're actually going to be able to reconstruct the impulse response in this LTI system. So that's going to be the goal of what we're going to do here. So in fact, here it is. 
I can compute this unknown H, this impulse response in the Fourier domain as just simply a, a quotient here of Y in the Fourier domain divided by X in the Fourier domain. Okay, so if I can Fourier transform each of these, take, take their uh, Y over X, then I have what exactly what I need for solving or getting H and then I can just inverse Fourier transform to get the H in the time domain. So let's go back to the differential equations I started off with. Here they are. So here's the differential equation for y. It's a linear constant coefficient of order n. So it could be a third order differential equation, fourth order differential equation. You specify the order of that through the parameter n. On the right, we have here the input differential equation for x. So x is an input, maps to the output y, which is over here. And then so x here is mth order. So it's mth order differential equation and n and m can be different. So for instance, you could map yourself from a second order differential equation to a fourth order differential equation or from a fourth to a second. So it just depends a lot on your LTI system. And here it's prescribed by something like this. And again, these a of k's and b of k's are simply constants which tell you the weights of each of the derivative terms. So we're gonna do is for a transform this differential equation. What we know is each derivative produces an i omega out front. So if I have a derivative of second order, it's i omega squared, third order, i omega cubed, so forth. And in fact, here, I'm gonna go up to nth order, so I'm gonna have an i omega to the nth power. Here, I go to the mth power, so it's gonna be, I'm gonna have an i omega to the mth power. So if you Fourier transform this term here, here's what you get. You get the Fourier transform of y times a of k, which are the coefficients, and i omega to the kth power, where again, k goes from 0 to n. Similar here for the input, you have here, when you Fourier transform, you have your b of k, i omega to the kth power, transform of x from 0 to m. So this is the relationship. Notice that I can actually pull out the Fourier transform of y and the Fourier transform of x from outside of this sum. So that's the base uh, representation of the signal x and y. It's for a transform. And all the sum is doing is actually putting here the a of k times i omega to the k power. So we could bring this back up. We can pull those out of the sum. So here's your y. Here is what the sum was acting on. Here's the x. And again, here is the sum over the b of k's and i omega to the k's. So what I can do now is divide this side by x and divide this side by this sum. And what you're gonna get is recall that the Fourier transform of the impulse response is y over x. So this is gonna give me immediately a relationship for this in terms of those a of k's and b of k's and the powers of i omega to the k. If I do that, here's what you get. So the Fourier transform of the impulse, which is this y over x, is equal to the sum to m of the b of k's i omega k's divided by the sum to n a of k i omega k. Remember, this n and m are the order of the differential equation, the highest derivative of the differential equation that you capture here in this formula. Okay, so that is the basic idea of this. Once you have this relationship, you now have the ability to look at your left and right hand side, in other words, your input to output mapping, which are now differential equations on both sides. And what you want to understand is, what is the impulse response consistent with taking me from the input to the output? And so this formula here tells you how to get this, at least in the Fourier domain, and then you just inverse Fourier transform this to get H itself. So in other words, this is a different way to compute the impulse response when you have differential equations that model the input and model the output. So let's consider a simple example. Here it is, a first order differential equation models the output dy dt plus ay, and the input is just some time series x of t. And so what we're gonna do with this is exactly what we just showed, which is Fourier transform everything. So Fourier transforming the left, you get i omega y plus ay, so Again, this is i omega y. The first derivative drops down an i omega. This has no derivative, so you just get back k y, and then the Fourier transform of x, which is capital X. From here, you can actually just solve for y over x, which we recall is h in the Fourier domain, and that's just one over i omega plus a. So right away, what I have here 
is the ability to sketch out what i omega is, or so eight, what h is in the Fourier domain, which is given by this formula here, which in fact, this sits on one of our Fourier transform tables. So at this point, once you have it in the Fourier domain and you wanna invert this, you can of course invert it um, by hand, but you could also in fact, um, take a look at this and just look at an integral table and we can find the inverse of this, which is in fact, the following formula, h of t. Now the impulse response for this differential equation is e to the minus a t times your on function u of t, right? So this is your, your heavy side delta function or heavy side function, which is it's zero up till uh, time t equals zero and then it turns on. So that's the, this is the impulse response for this differential equation here. So, okay, so that's how you would work this. This is a very simple example. I'm gonna do one more example, which is a little bit more complex, but at the end of the day, it's a very simple idea here that we're working with to solving this problem in this way. Okay, let's do a harder example. And now this example, what we're gonna have is a differential equation on the left and a differential equation on the right. So the differential equation on the left, here it is, it's a second order linear constant coefficient uh, differential equation. And on the right, it is being forced by the input, which is a first order differential equation. So the whole game here is just a Fourier transform, both sides, and that's very easy to do. So the Fourier transform of this is gonna bring down an I omega squared. The Fourier transform of this is gonna bring out an I omega. This is not gonna do anything except put it in the Fourier domain. This will bring out an I omega as well, and this is just gonna have the factor of two still floating around. So when you do that, and you collect terms, here's what you get. So you get the Fourier transform of y, here's that i omega squared plus four i omega plus three. This comes from this differential equation here. And then if you Fourier transform this side, what you get here, right, is the i omega that comes from the first derivative plus two that comes uh, from the constant term. So notice you here, if i omega plus two, they multiply the x, the Fourier transform of x, and then on this side here, what we're looking at here, right, these are the terms associated with the terms of the y equation here, which is the second derivative plus the first derivative plus three, which is given by these terms here. I can now take this term and divide both sides by it, and then divide both sides also by x, and that's gonna give me my h. Okay, so I rewrite this here. Here it is, this is the expression we derived. I divide both sides by x, divide both sides by this, uh, polynomial, second order polynomial in omega, and I get this here. And remember that y over x is the impulse response in the Fourier domain. So what I've got here is this nice representation. It's pretty simple looking. It's a linear polynomial on top, quadratic polynomial on the bottom. And so the trick to solving these is to basically do partial fractions. One of the things you'll see oftentimes in Fourier uh, transforms as well as Laplace transforms is part of what you're going to do at this point is figure out how do I represent this in terms of a, a representation that sits on a Fourier transform table. And oftentimes when we have these things, we have to do partial fractions to get, up, get out the forms we want. So you can take this here and write it out as a partial fractions as this here. So this is still in the Fourier domain and this is still our h in the Fourier domain, which is y over x, but you get one half i omega plus one plus one half i omega plus three. So these are the two terms that we can break this apart into this, this here, which now allows us to do the inverse Fourier transform simply by looking at our Fourier transform tables to compute this, which then gives us um, what we want. So from inverting from the Fourier transform tables, what you find, right? So we have this differential equation, here is what the impulse response looks like in the Fourier domain, and the inversion in the Fourier transform tables looks just like this. So it's one half e to the minus t times u of t plus one half e to the minus three of t u of t. So what we've just done is we've said this formula for h of t is the impulse response of this input-output relation pair here, which are now governed by differential equations. So this is a very elegant, and fast way to produce the results. Notice that we're doing this by hand. These are all analytic calculations, but notice what you could also do if you uh, needed to do this computationally. 
computationally, you Fourier transform both sides, you'd get this term out, and then you just inverse Fourier transform. That's it. So the FFT is a very powerful tool if you wanted to compute this in practice uh, very simply, very elegantly. So that's kind of it. So this ends our chapter on the continuous Fourier transform. Um, and really what it highlights for us is all these really incredible properties that the Fourier transforms allow us to work with, both in terms of evaluating LTI systems. It's a very natural framework because the LTI system, you know, we can simply take the Fourier transform of the input, Fourier transform of the input response. Convo in the convolution now is multiplication in the Fourier domain. Invert that. We have fast algorithms that can do this. I've shown you some code that can do this very easily. And what I just showed you now is how do you model systems where the input itself, this x, is a differential equation, the output is a differential equation, and what this shows you is that there is no problem if you use the Fourier transform in modeling such systems that are driven by differential equations both on the right and the left. In fact, the Fourier transform is a very natural tool for doing that because all that derivatives do is multiply by I omega, and so what you end up doing is algebra on polynomials uh, with, with omega. So that's it for this chapter, and we'll move on to more issues on Fourier transforms, and we're going to consider the discrete Fourier transform uh, in upcoming lectures. Thank you.